but when the opportunity at Tomo presented itself, I had to weigh, hey, do I keep trying for this or do I take a risk and maybe get one step higher at a new company? And maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't. Welcome to Let's Talk Real with Mel. We are here with Sean Guerra from Tomo. Here, uh, new new and stomping on the scene <laughs> lender out here. So yep. tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Tomo. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Tomo is a purchase-only uh, mortgage company that is looking to simplify the process for uh, both consumers uh, and then partnering with real estate agents. So we want to make things fast and speedy and more cost-effective uh, for the customer. Okay. And so what, and what does that, I mean, what does that look like for, for those that may not know? I mean, fast and speedy, like how do you? Yeah. Do so typically when you go to get a mortgage, uh, you know, it can be a long daunting process. The way that our platform works is you can hook up bank accounts and a social security number. And we're actually able to pull a lot of the documentation that you would typically need to track down from publicly available information. So from the customer perspective, it just makes things a lot more seamless. Okay. Uh, and saves you a lot of time uh, okay. because the tech the technology is integrated to pull that information for you essentially so i don't need my like fax machine to send over stuff you don't need your fax machine you don't need to go to your storage unit to find a file cabinet however if that's the case we can still work with you but chances are we can save you all that time and energy okay who so this is relatively new because i hadn't heard of that yeah. until you guys like it because you i'd heard you say before that so social security number, a signature, and link in your bank accounts, and you can fully underwrite. I mean, you can start the process. You can generate the pre-approval. Fully underwritten pre-approval, uh, income, assets. We can run fraud and credit. We can do all of the legwork up front. So that way, when you're going to buy, your offer is going to stand out. There's no last-minute surprises. So we've been around for um, a couple of years, we've started the company in, uh, October of 2020, Greg, uh, Schwartz and Carrie Armstrong are the two co-founders okay. and we've been originating loans for a, about two years now. Okay. Two years original. So a new, new company and you guys have really jumped in quickly. Yeah. How have, and so you're in, you're in like a number of States now, right? Yeah. We're probably in about 18 or so States. We're probably licensed in about 28. So we are rapidly expanding. Um, I personally used to work at Zillow, uh, and that's so where I started to work with real estate agents. And so uh, a lot of the people at Tomo used to work at Zillow as well. And so our business primarily comes from real estate agent partnerships. And so those relationships that we already had in place, uh, we were able to uh, carry those over to working with those real estate agent partners at Tomo. And that's helped us kind of expedite and expand uh, our growth. Okay. So you're finding that realtors are liking the services because it makes it easier for their customers. Yeah. They like, they like the service because we, we communicate well with the agents and the customers. We work seven days a week. We don't work nine to five. We work what we like to call agent hours. Uh, we help to invest in the growth and generate leads together and convert them together. Uh, so everything that we do we're taking feedback both from the customer and from the real estate agent. And then we invest that feedback into the way that we innovate with the make adjustments. Exactly. You said, you said real agent hours. So like 24, 20, 25, eight. Right? If, if, you were, if you were to call of me on the day that comes after Sunday in between Monday, we would pick up the phone. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> Cause I know, and sometimes that's a challenge obviously with a, you know, a big box bank. Yep. Um, you know, they may have a zillion dollars to lend, but if you can't reach people when you need to reach them, you know, your customer's looking like, hey, I, you know, and, and the seller, you know, is trying to like, what's up with closing? And sometimes it's hard to, to get. Um, We've heard way too many stories of people feeling like they were just a number and they're making the most important purchase of their life potentially. And they couldn't get a hold of somebody at the last minute. And so it kind of feels like somebody's taking their thumb and pressing down on, it's like the elephant in the ant. And that's exactly who we're trying to replace. We don't want people to feel like they can't reach somebody when they need them. We want to be the person that hears you loud and clear and is able to provide a good service so that the biggest purchase of your life is as stress-free as possible. 
That's pretty cool. So yeah, removing some of that friction from the from the transaction that that normally exists. That's pretty cool. So new, yeah, yeah. And I had not again had not heard of, and, I don't, and I'm not even sure if there are any competitors in the space yet. Yeah, we. So you guys are are really jumping in fast and yeah. There's there's other people out there that will say, hey, they can do an instant mortgage or an instant pre approval. But when you read the fine print, typically there's you know it's not exactly what it says. Uh, with us, you know, it's what it says. It's a fully underwritten pre-approval. Uh, it's either been looked at by desktop underwriting or an actual underwriting who Tomo employs, and we sit in the same office together, and our loan officers and our underwriting team are right next to each other. So the quick speediness of it comes because everything is in-house for Tomo. Okay, and and for those that don't know, the you know, say so you said you have a lot of employees there. They were at Zillow. What's the yeah. connection? I mean, yeah. So Greg Schwartz is the founder, um, one of the co-founders of the company, along with Carrie Armstrong. Greg was the former president of Zillow, and Carrie was one of the vice presidents over the premier agent business. So they had they had been working um, with real estate agents uh, and customers uh, a long, long time. And throughout that process, they had discovered that a lot of deals fall apart because of mortgage and because of financing. Uh, so they spun off and decided to do their own thing. So there's no actual real affiliation between Zillow and Tomo. Um, we're a mortgage company and they do a lot of things, um, but because the founders are from Zillow and there's a lot of people that work directly with agents at Zillow, a lot of us have followed suit because we feel passionate about making home buying uh, more accessible to basically everyone. Yeah, and helping agents help their clients. Helping agents help their clients. Too many agents over the years have told me that they didn't close a deal because it fell apart because there was a last minute surprise and the lender didn't realize that it was a condo and not a primary residence. Like, how do you not know that? So we're trying to make sure all of the boxes are checked up front. So when the agent takes the buyer and they find that home, boom, they move quickly. And now we're on to appraisal and all of the rest of the process. And we don't have to worry about that financing piece because we know that that buyer is ready to rock. Right, and I think, and one one thing that's important to note, maybe about the about the the that connection, even though it's not really an official connection, yeah, is to say that that you guys are very well funded. We're, and so that would be, yeah, that would be yeah. probably an understatement because of the pedigree of the company, and it's almost like it's not like the first rodeo uh, from working at Tomo, coming from a big company like Zillow to Tomo. We are a startup in the fe- in the sense that we move quickly. We can innovate and pivot fast, um, but from a corporate structure standpoint, we don't feel like a startup because it's like we've been there and done that before. And for a lot of those reasons and because of Carrie and Greg and who they are and the things that they've accomplished, um, we're fortunate to have raised a lot of capital, which can be invested in every asset of the company from building out the technology to investing in uh, business ventures with agents. Uh, we're we're fortunate to be in a good place, especially in this competitive market. All right, cool. Well, that's good stuff. So yeah. now, enough about Tomo. Okay, cool. Let's talk about you. So yeah. What'd you do before? I know before Tomo, you were Zillow. Yep. What'd you do? What? How'd you even get into that space? Yeah, my, I mean, my my background going back to college, I went to school to get into sports management, and I tried and tried and tried, and I could not get into the uh, business school, which is where the sports management program. Uh, is run at uh, UMass, Amherst is where I went. And I had written letters to the dean and I had a good GPA, but I just couldn't get in. So I said, forget it. I don't want to do an extra year of school. So I uh, started to do a lot of sports internships. I worked for the alumni association and sold tickets. I worked in the Cape Cod baseball league and did sales for them. I even worked at sports authority because I was like, well, it's sports. Right. And then I figured out that in sports, I wasn't going to make a lot of money. And the New York Mets weren't going to pay me well to live in New York City. So I got into sales. I was selling sports advertising there. And it was like a boiler room. Uh, so I learned a lot of really good sales techniques, but the company culture wasn't great. So when I was searching for a really strong culture surrounded by smart people and great leadership, I landed on Zillow. Okay. And then throughout my time there, kind of moved up the ranks. And you get to a certain point where it's like, hey, I still want to grow my career. Um, and so that's when I made the decision that, Hey, I want to come to Tomo, get in early so that I can move up, uh, you know, and reach my career aspirations. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. So in that, in that, in that 
in that journey, I'm sure there was some, there were some, um, we all have times of, you know, either uncertainty or, yeah. you know, where we're questioning or, you know, we are in the right place. Yep. Um, do you, do you mind sharing a little bit about kind of that, that process of yeah. leaving? Cause I'm sure at Zillow, you were doing very well. You worked your way up and yeah. comfortable. And so you are actually, you're still taking a risk yep. by, um, stepping out. Yeah. Yeah. At Zillow, I had started off, I had originally applied actually to Zillow to be an enterprise sales rep. And then at the time they didn't quite think that I had the experience that they were looking for. So they asked me to do inside sales. So I did that for uh, a little bit. And in my training class of about 14, I was the only person in the first month after you actually start to not hit their quota. Um, and that was, I think, the only time at Zillow that I never hit my quota. But when you're starting at a new company and there's 14 people who are succeeding and you didn't because you were new to the industry, whatever the reason was, you can start to sense a lot of self-doubt. And you kind of have to just keep your mindset in a place of like, no, I believe in myself. I believe in my capabilities and just keep grinding away and being a sponge and willing to learn. And so then eventually I did well in the inside sales. I moved into enterprise sales, which was where I originally had applied. And then I moved into a leadership program there. And then eventually I moved into a position where I was leading a team of brokerage sales reps. So we were working with the biggest brokerages in the company, uh, in the country. And so that's the point where then I started to struggle again because I wanted to get to the next level. And I had interviewed and interviewed and interviewed, and I probably missed to get promoted to a, a senior manager probably four or five times. And the feedback was always, hey, you're well-qualified, you interview well, there's just somebody a little bit better. Um, and so I didn't run away from that, but when the opportunity at Tomo presented itself, I had to weigh, hey, do I keep trying for this or do I take a risk and maybe get one step higher at a new company and maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't. Um, and so that's when I decided to make the jump because I think Tomo saw the potential that I could bring to the table and maybe Zillow, maybe maybe they didn't quite see what was sitting right in front of them. Yeah, that happens sometimes. We get, it, <laughs> the, the, you, we get on the other side of that fence and then um, and they're like, oh man. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's like, kind of, it looks like you made the right decision. That's kind of what happened when uh, you know I was leaving. It was kind of like, well, we can do a, a, a bunch of stuff for you that you want, and hey. it was too late. And also, th that's how strongly I felt about Tomo. Like all of that aside, I still would have made the jump to Tomo because I believe in the the mission, and I also see a great opportunity for myself from a career pre uh, trajectory standpoint. Yeah, it almost sounds like a relationship. Like, no, no, baby, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we both leave all in and out. Right. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Right. Yes. <laughs> all right. Good stuff. So, what do you what do you like to do outside of outside of work? Outside of work, yeah, so, I've got a fiance named Ricky. She uh, she lives with me in Stamford, Connecticut. We've got a little golden doodle. He is a handful. He's about one and a half years old. He thinks he's the mayor of the town and uh, like prances around like he's a show dog and a model. Uh, I like to spend time on the water. We're on the water in Connecticut. We're near the water down here in Florida right now. So in the summers, beach, that sort of thing, and then traveling. So we tend to do like small little trips. We'll go to like Savannah, Georgia for a weekend or Newport, Rhode Island, and just do like a bunch of long weekends. And then we'll mix in one vacation to Turks and Caicos every year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're foodies so we right. like to go find the spots that have really good food and maybe a cocktail or two okay sounds good and, and stuff yeah so outdoorsy beach water out your boaters beach i i used to have a jet ski i got a big commission check one time at zillow and i was like you know what it was during covid and i was living in a high rise and i saw these boats come in and out and i wasn't quite ready ready for a boat so i was like you know what give me a jet ski um and then my fiance wanted to get engaged and i needed a little extra cash she likes fancy stuff. You had and make so stuff. I made some decisions to part ways with the jet ski. Yeah, and, but I have yeah. friends who have boats, and that's the way to do it. Right, right. Let it on there. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come along. I'll bring the beer. I'll bring the beer. Right. You guys worry about the maintenance, the maintenance upkeep of that be like of that right. cash cow. Yeah, people say their their favorite day is the the day they bought the boat and the day they sold the boat. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Two, most, the two best days. And I have plenty of friends who have boats that are sitting in their backyards that don't work. Who I think you know they would wish they would have sold that boat when it was working. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and boating business is a big. You got a big money to to, to play in yeah. that space. Yeah, play in that space. So so let me let me ask you. Oh, we've got a quote of the day. Okay, quote of the day. 
I have a Labradoodle too. We have two Labradoodles. Yeah. So yeah, what are the love names? the Doodles. Uh, Milo and Moon Brownie. Okay. Yeah. Mine's Hudson. Hudson. Yeah. Cool. Year and a half. Yeah, and mine's about the same, about the same age. Yeah. So okay. So quote of the day: Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you're doing or learning to do. And that was from Pele. Yeah. Well, Soccer Pele player just lost. Uh, yeah. Recently, what do you yeah, think? he did. I think everything that he said in that quote is spot on. Things don't happen because of luck. I mean, sometimes you get a little bit lucky, but things happen because you're willing to grind and you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to get back up after you've fallen or failed. And so the, the, the quote that I would tack on to that quote, and it's a quote that when I you know interview people to join Tomo and they ask me like, hey, what do I need? I, I tell them this quote and it's real simple. It's just hustle beats talent. For me personally, I would rather take somebody who's willing to grind it out and is willing to learn and is not gonna give up. And even when they're having success, they continue to put in the work versus somebody who has all the talent in the world, but you know that talent kind of gets to their head. And yeah. when you think you're at the top, there's always somebody else coming for you. And that's when you get nipped in the butt and all of a sudden, that talent is is beaten by somebody else's hustle. Yeah, where they say um, hard work beats talent when talent refuses to work. Yeah, it's the, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, that one's a little uh, better worded than mine. I'm yeah, but no, I like no, no, but I like yeah, no, but hustle beats talent is simple. Yeah, and then, and I and I agree hundred percent. Yeah. All right, so if we were, um, you know, I guess a, a, a realtor or a brokerage mm-hmm. or a team lead, and we say, you know what, I. Maybe you heard of heard of Tomo, heard of you guys, uh, or maybe I haven't heard of you, but I'm very interested yeah. in hearing more about you. I know you you co market with with the right, yep. you find the right relationships, you co market sure. with teams, so you can help teams, real estate brokerages, and teams and agents, top producing agents grow. Yep. How would we get in touch with you? Uh, a few ways. One, if you just want to check us out and learn more, hello tomo.com, H E L L O T O M O dot com. That's our website. Uh, and then you can just contact me directly. And if I'm not the person, I get you connected with the right person on my team, depending on what your market is. So my phone number, personal cell phone, 860-575-9505. Or you can shoot me a quick email at Sean, S-E-A-N-G, as in Guerra, my last name, uh, at tomonetworks.com, T-O-M-O-N-E-T-W-O-R-K-S. Okay. Dot com. Sean G, S-E-A-N-G, at Tomo Networks. Dot com. Yep. Plural. No. Plural. No. All Arcs. right. Well, I love it. Well, thanks for sharing. I love the story. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm looking to see uh, you guys being all 50 states. Real soon. Yeah. And we're excited to partner with Exit Flagship as well. And if you're looking for a home in that Maryland state or in that DMV area, you know who to contact. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. You got it. Thanks. Thanks.